Mark, people have been talking about um, signs that would give us a sense as to how this is being affected. Uh, are jobless claims this week one of them? Yeah, that's a really good uh, real-time sensitive barometer of what's going on in the economy. So yeah, I'd, I'd watch the UI claims very, very carefully. If they start rising in a consistent way, uh, that would be a sign. I mean, we're in the low 200,000, so that's consistent with a very strong job market. If we start migrating up to 250K per week, that'd be an indication that this is starting to do some real damage. Uh, Brian, obviously, we, we set the record on the longest one so far. Uh, what's the thinking in your circles as to how Given how uh, little uh, sign there is of compromise, how long it could last? Oh, it could last a long time. Uh, I mean, I, you know, we're almost halfway into January. Uh, I could see it going into February. I, could, I can certainly see it going to the end of the month. We have a State of the Union address. Under normal circumstances, you would say you want this wrapped up before the State of the Union because it, it just complicates the State of the Union and interferes with the message of the State of the Union. But these aren't normal times and these are normal politics. So could it go into February? I, I can make a, an argument that, yeah, we're going to see it go another two and a half weeks into, into the next month. Is national emergency considered consensus in D.C.? No, I don't think there is a consensus on national emergency. Um, I don't think there's a consensus within the White House because I think it's, it comes down to one person, and that's the president, whatever he decides at a given moment. And I don't think the White House staff or others in Washington have a clear view of what he may do. I think he's keeping his cards uh, close to the vest on this. Uh, you know, the other, you know, just going back to the previous question, why so long? I mean, one of the things is the administration has taken off the pressure points. You know, when, when you look at what, what the impact is, it's mortgage applications, it's tax refunds, it's national flood insurance applications, and those are being processed normally. We thought those, there was going to be some interference with those. You know, until the TSA agents start show, not showing up in, in greater numbers, that's, you know, it, it's hard to look around and see where the pressure points are um, other than individual stories of government workers having problems with, their pay, with uh, meeting their bills. And even then, the federal banking regulators have come in and, and told the banks to work with customers to get them through this hard patch. So the pressure points that lead you to a deal aren't really there right now. So, Mark, historically, how do these kind of events, the longer they go, factor into sentiment numbers, consumer sentiment, business sentiment, small business sentiment? How long does that take? How long does that last? And what do you see this time? Well, I, I, I think it already is starting to factor into sentiment because it's conflating with all the other things that are going on uh, in D.C. I mean, the trade war, uh, the president's trade war, has already affected sentiment, you know, partly investor sentiment, sentiment business sentiment. The, the Duke University runs a survey of uh, CFOs, and CFOs expect a recession in 2019, in, in significant part due to the trade war, and, and I'm sure the government shutdown is now starting to conflate with that. The other, the other thing that's going to come up pretty soon is the Treasury debt limit. We hit the debt limit March 1, and then, of course, Treasury has ways to maneuver around that for some time. but. You know, the longer this goes on, uh, the more things come off the rails, uh, the harder this is going to be on sentiment and the more damage it's going to do. So, you know, so far, no big deal. But I think the costs will mount pretty quickly as uh, people, as the collective psyche begins to get worn down here. Well, Mark, given Brian's comments, we did just put something up that indicated a few things. Is this true? Is the SBA not providing loans to small businesses? Is the USDA stop financing farmers? We know the SEC right. is not reviewing IPOs uh, and things like that. Uh, you know, are those things stopping uh, right now, and will they have an economic impact? Yeah, th those are right. That's right. So the Small Business Administration is not making small business loans. Uh, financing for farmers is being curtailed. Uh, the, you know, the court system is uh, disrupted. You mentioned the SEC. That's a good example. FDA is not doing its inspections. You know, th that doesn't matter in any given day or given week. But, you know, if this gets into weeks and months, then the damage is going to certainly become more obvious. And then here's, here's the other thing uh, that uh, I think is important. Uh, these government workers aren't going to stick around, right? I mean, they need to pay the bills. Uh, the job market's pretty tight. There's a lot of other job opportunities. They're going to start to bolt. And as soon as they start to bolt, this becomes a longer-term problem. The government just won't be able to function, won't be able to get up back and running again quickly, even if the government uh, reopens. So, so the yeah. damage is going to start uh, mounting pretty quickly here. 
Brian, one last question. Is it, is it possible that the Chinese vice premier's visit could be upended if the shutdown continues? No, I, I, I doubt it. Um, I, one, I think it's a, it would be an international embarrassment. Two, I think you can make a very easy argument that it is a critical function of government. Um, and so, yeah, I would be very, very surprised if, if, the, if the meeting got uh, postponed, delayed.